Happy Easter, everyone. It's so nice that you're here today. I hope that you and your families are going to be able to celebrate this day because it is the most special day in the church of the year. And I'm sure you know why. Because it is the day after Jesus was killed by his enemies. Three days later, Jesus arose and was just like his old self. And today, we all celebrate the fact that Jesus has arisen and influences our lives. So it's a very, very special day. Our first story this morning is called The Easter Story, and it is written and illustrated by Carol Heyer. And I'm sure that you know parts of the story, but it's always good to be reminded. So here we go. At Easter time, we think of fresh new grass and baby animals and warm golden sunshine. We think of baskets full of candy and brilliantly colored eggs. But most of all, at Easter time, we think about Jesus and all that he did for us. Jesus was born in a manger in Bethlehem on the, on the first Christmas day. A great star shone in the sky above the stable, and its sparkling light led shepherds and great kings to the baby Jesus. They brought gifts and knelt to worship the newborn child, the Son of God. Many, many years before the prophets had Cheryl here, for the prophets had heralded that his birth would take place and that God's son would rule this world. When Jesus grew to be a man, he traveled across the country, healing the sick and the lame and teaching about God. Everywhere Jesus went, people gathered to hear him speak, and little children flocked around him because each he greeted each of them with love and kindness. When the time came for Jesus to fulfill, fulfill the teachings of the early prophets, he journeyed to the city of Jerusalem with his closest followers, the disciples. Jesus rode into the city on a little donkey, and people lined the streets to see him. They laid palm branches on the ground to make a soft carpet for his donkey's feet. Jesus entered the city of Jerusalem, surrounded by love and glory, on this, the first Palm Sunday. Upon his entry into Jerusalem, Jesus went straight to the temple where he expected to find people worshiping. Instead, he found merchants, those are like salesmen, buying and selling and trying to make money. Jesus was so angry that he threw the money boxes into the air and chased the merchants away. Then Jesus answered, entered the temple to preach and to pray. The leaders of the temple saw this and saw the crowd draw closer to hear Jesus' teachings, and they began to turn against him. Inside the temple, Jesus told wonderful stories called parables, and I know you've been listening about parables in godly play, and debated the law which the chief priests and the elders of the temple the leaders of the temple did not like to see the people listening so closely to Jesus. So they asked him questions and tried to trick him into saying something wrong. When asked what was the greatest commandment of all, Jesus answered, love God with all your heart. And this I give you as a new commandment, love your neighbor as yourself. As Jesus continued his teachings, 
and more and more people followed him, the leaders and chief priests grew more fearful of him. They began to plot against Jesus and looked for a way to have him arrested. On the night of the Feast of the Unleavened Bread, Jesus said that the 12 disciples gathered together for the traditional Passover meal. Sometimes this is called the Seder meal, and sometimes when we're not during close time, we celebrate it here too. When they were all seated around the table, Jesus took a loaf of bread and gave thanks to God. He tore the bread into pieces and gave them to his disciples. He then passed around the cup so that each disciple could have a drink. Jesus knew that this would be the last time he would sit and eat with the disciples. But he asked them to rem remember him in the future by gathering together to share this meal. This was Jesus' last supper. And we can celebrate this on Sundays during the year. And it's what we call communion here. Some churches call it the Eucharist. After supper, Jesus and some of his disciples went to the Garden of Gethsemane and Jesus went off by himself to pray. When he returned, he found that the follow his followers had all fallen asleep. As he tried to awaken them, a large crowd of people fell and arrived, carrying torches and weapons. Sent by the chief priests, these men arrested Jesus and took him away. The men took him to the court of Caiaphas, the high priest, where all the chief priests and elders had assembled. Caiaphas asked Jesus, Are you Christ, the Son of God? When Jesus replied, Yes, it is as you say. Those assembled ordered him to be taken to the high Roman court and brought before Pilate. As it was customary to release one, pass, one pat prisoner each Passover, Pilate went to the people and asked if they wanted him to release Jesus. But the chief priests had stirred up the crowd and the people angrily shouted for Jesus' death. Pilate let the crowd take Jesus away and the soldiers put him on a cross. While the soldiers waited for him to die, Jesus' friends gathered around the cross, trying to comfort each other. And lightning pierced the darkness in the sky. And then, the moment of Jesus' death, a power, powerful earthquake shook the ground so hard that the great curtain of the temple was torn in half. Later in the day, one of Jesus' followers took down his body and tenderly laid it in a tomb. And the tomb was in a cave in the mountains or the hills. A huge, heavy stone was rolled in front of the opening, and a soldier was sent to guard the tomb. Early Sunday morning, the third day after Jesus' death, a group of women brought spices to the tomb to anoint Jesus' body. In ancient times, when a person died, the spices were to help his bo the person's body not have a bad odor. So that, that spices were very, very important. But they found that the stone had been rolled away, and when they entered the tomb, they saw that Jesus' body was gone. The women were angry and afraid, and they cried out, wondering who would have taken Jesus away. Suddenly, a man dressed in white appeared. He asked the women, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, he is risen.
the women ran to tell the disciples of the disappearance of Jesus' body. When they heard the news, two of the disciples returned to the tomb with one of the women, Mary Magdalene. They entered the tomb and found strips of linen lying on the ground and the burial clothes folded neatly nearby. The disciples left the tomb feeling sad and afraid because Jesus had been taken away. Mary Magdalene remained alone outside the tomb weeping. As she sobbed, she heard a man's voice ask her, Why do you cry? Not looking up, she replied, Sir, if you have taken Jesus' body away, please tell me where you have put him. Then the man said, Mary. And she lifted her head to see Jesus standing before her. Jesus was alive and talking to her. Mary ran to the disciples who rejoiced to know that Jesus was risen. Throughout the whole world, when Jesus met once more with his friends, he said to them, go throughout the whole world Tell all the people what you have seen and heard. And remember, wherever you go, I will be with you always and till the end of time. So this is why Christians celebrate Easter. We remember that Jesus gave up his life because he loved us. And on Easter morning, we rejoice because Jesus Christ rose from the dead and lives. And we know that because of him, we can also live. And we live our very best lives that we can to celebrate Jesus' rise. My next story is about, we call Jesus rising the resurrection. My next story is also a story about resurrection but it is not about Jesus. And in fact, it's not even about a person. And I hope you will enjoy this story, mainly because it's one of my most favorite stories. Sometimes when you look out in the sky, you might see a sky that looks something like this pattern. Usually it's not quite as bright, and it's, it's the kind of pattern in the clouds. Maybe you haven't seen it yet, but I think you will someday. So let's hear the story of these clouds. And the book is called Swan Sky, and it is written by a Japanese man named Tajima, and he also illustrated it. Far, far away, there is a lake where the swans go in the winter time. Can you see that the lake that's really winter, it's freezing, all the snow is up on the mountains? And that's an ice wall. And there they are, returning to the lake in the winter time. One year, there is a swan who cannot go. See the little swan here? Her family stays with her long after the other swans have left. But no matter how they coax the little swan, she simply tucks her head into her soft, warm wings. Spring comes to the cold land, and flowers burst from the earth and blossom. Still the young swan does nothing but lie quietly by the lake. One night, after his family has gone to sleep, the fa father swan stands looking at the moon. He realizes the kind has come when the Swan family will have to return to the North Country. 
The next morning, the other swans honk and honk. They want the little swan to come with them. See, their beaks are all honking. Family flies in circles about her and fills the air with sad cries. But she calls back, telling him them that she cannot go. Soon, the swans disappear beyond the mountains. The young swan is last, the swan's last goodbye echoes across the empty lake. She is alone. Then suddenly, above the mountains, the little swan sees white fluttering shapes. Her family has returned. That night, they rest together in the moonlight. The young swan buries her head in her feathers. As she sleeps, her family gathers around her. Before morning, she dies. At daybreak, saddened, by, saddened, the Swan family flies toward the North Country. When they reach their home, other swan families have already arrived. Nesting has begun. Still, the land feels empty to them. You see what's happening in the sky up here? You see sort of this, shed, this pattern of wings? Then in the cold sky, the morning light begins to break through the clouds. The swan family thinks of the little swan. Can you see how, how the swan's body is becoming the cloud pattern? And as the sun shines boldly down, they feel its gentle warmth. Spring has come again. Wah, wah, they call to the bright northern sky. And that is what I mean by a swan sky, by the patterns of the clouds. And you will see them sometimes. They don't show very often, but sometimes they do and you can see them. I want to close with a poem by Nikki Grimes, who has written a lot of children's books. And it is about Jesus' resurrection. So we're going back to end this session with Jesus. And this is the soldier that was to stand by until Jesus died on the cross. So this poem is about the soldier's thoughts and it's called To Be Continued. Don't tell me he's God. I pierced his human side. Use my daily sharpened spear in time, I'm certain someone will explain how he can be here preaching still and rising on the wings of the wind, which I think is a nice end about Jesus' resurrection and about the swan too. So can we have a little Easter prayer, please? And I will say a line and you can repeat it after me. Bow our heads to close our eyes and fold our hands. <clears throat> Dear God, thank you for giving us Jesus Christ on both this land and across the divide into your land. Help us to learn to be loving and peaceful like Jesus. We ask this 
in Jesus' name and his memory and in God too. Thank you very much. Amen. Thanks for being here, everybody. <laughs>